Hello, everybody. My name is Simon Wright. I am Director of Programming at Japan House London, and welcome to today's event, Sharpening Japanese Knives, a masterclass with Sakai City's Yamatsuka Mitsuo, hosted by Japan House London. This event is the third in a four-part webinar series exploring the industrial heritage and culture of Sakai City in Osaka Prefecture in the Kansai region of Japan. Before we start, uh, however, I would like to run through a few housekeeping rules for those of you watching this webinar. Please note that your microphone and webcam will be disabled for the entire duration of the event. And please use the question and answer feature, however, to type your questions for the presenters at any time throughout this session. If you do not want your name to be attached to your question, please check the option send anonymously. Questions will be collected by Japan House moderators and a selection will be answered live at the end of the event. Please note that we may not be able to answer all questions during the session. Also, please note that the contents of this event will be streamed live on Facebook, YouTube and LinkedIn, where a recording of the uh, event will be archived later. So today's event is broadcast live from Japan and from the UK. Uh, from two locations, Japan House London and Sakai in Osaka Prefecture. Today we are focusing on the maintenance and care of Japanese knives in a masterclass taught by master craftsman Yamatsuka Mitsuo, a specialist togishi or sharpener from Sakai. Following an introduction about the preparation required for the process, Yamatsuka-san will show us how to practice knife sharpening at home so that everyone watching can learn how to maintain the sharpness of the blade and ensure its lifelong use of whichever knife you are using. He is then joined by Kajia, that's a blacksmith, Ikeda Yoshikazu, who gives a brief demonstration of cutting techniques using a variety of uh, ingredients from Japanese cuisine. And finally, there will be an opportunity for our presenters to answer a selection of the questions submitted by today's attendees. So please do send in your questions. So now I would like to introduce uh, our first presenter, that is Yamatsuka Mitsuo. Uh, welcome, Yamatsuka-san, thank you very much. Yamatsuka Mitsuo is a, a, a sharpener, uh, or in Japanese, a togishi. And after training under his uncle Yamatsuka Yoshikazu for 10 years, Yamatsuka Mitsuo set up his own uh, business in 1984. He was certified by METI, which is Japan's Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, as a traditional craftsman in 1999. He has been commended for his work as an Osaka Prefecture craftsman in 2016, a Sakai City Manufacturing Meister, in 2017 and received the Kinky Bureau of Economy, Trade and Industry Director's Commendation in 2020, just last year. He is now the chairman of the Sakai Forged Knives Traditional Craftsmen Association. I don't think we could be in any better hands, so thank you very much indeed, Yamatsuka-san, for joining us today. We will also be joined by Air Kurosawa, who is our interpreter for today's event and will be participating off camera. So thank you very much, Yamatsuka-san. A very impressive CV uh, with regard to sharpening knives. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a great privilege to have you with us. I would like to now hand over to you for your explanation and demonstration. Nomu, yoroshiku Sakai no Yamatsuka desu. Maybe air, you can, you can, um, we can maybe hear you. I wonder, Air, can you hear us? Uh, 
apologies for the delay. Um, yes. Um, thank, hello, everyone. My name is Yamatsuka Mitsuo. Today, I will be showing how to sharpen um, two different types of knives. Um, first, single bevel knife um, sharpened on one side, and the second is the double bevel knife um, sharpened on both sides. え、包丁とぐにゃたって、とい to sharpen the knife at home, I would recommend using the sharpening stone um, numbered around 1000. That would, should be adequate enough for home use. Um, if you want to sharpen it even further, then I would recommend using um, even higher numbers, 3000 to 4000. <laughs> If there are any chipping in the knives, then first I would recommend using um, rougher sharpening stones such as 200. For safety, I would recommend you um, prepare a wet cloth um, to be laid underneath the sharpening stone um, for it to for to secure the stone on the table. I will explain both kat, what kataba, um, single bevel, and moroha, double bevel, means. Kataha というのは、裏、裏と表があるんですけど、裏側はべたつくなっています。And with kataha, single, um, kataba, there are two sides to the knife, um, the, and one side is thicker, the back side is thicker. And then on, on the front, there is a side called shinogi, um, the, the boundary between the sharpened and non sharpened side. This is the kataha knife. And this is the moroha. Ryoba, um, double bevel knife. Uramo, Omotemo, Mannakani, Hocho no Mannakani Sotte, House Ketemas. And the blade goes in between um, the knife. Um, you can see the edge on, on both sides. Korega Morohades. And that is the Moroha knife. どうし。どうし。あと10番。え、かけなんかある場合はこの粗い200番。普通家庭用ですと1000番で十分切れるまでいけます。as I've mentioned, if there are any chipping, then please um, pri um, sharpen it primary, um, um, primarily with the rough sharpening stone around 200. Um, but for home use, 1000 in the middle um, would be adequate. <laughs> To sharpen it even further, as I said, I would recommend higher numbers such as 3,000 or 4,000.
So now, thank you very much, Yamatsuka-san. Now we're going to move on to a demonstration of, of how to sharpen the knives. Thank you very much indeed. First, I will tell you how to, um, I will explain how to hold the knife. The index finger goes to the spine of the knife. And the thumb goes in between bolster and the heel um, to secure the position. And the remaining fingers, remaining three fingers, hold the middle of the handle. And for single beveled knife, um, you keep you keep it in angle for of about forty five degrees and place it on the stone. And make sure you hold the knife with your the other fan's fingertip and place and um, move the knife smoothly from the tip to heel. Make sure that the entire part of the blade is covered. And once you sharpen on the blade um, for, for single beveled knife, you do notice that there are um, the burr comes out on the other side. Once you feel, once you feel it in your fingertips that the burr is there, then that is the sign that the knife is being sharpened. And you make sure that the burr is there on the other side. And now, um, as the front has been sharpened, we sharpen the back. With back, um, you place the knife flatly on the stone. And but make sure that you don't put too much pressure on. Um, keep keep everything gently, and then the weight is on when you pull back the knife towards you instead of going forward. Now the sharpening stone has been changed to the three thousand, and. I am finishing the edge of the blade. And the back, um, I am doing the same as I've done before with the previous sharpening stone. Make sure that it is laid out flatly on top of the stone. Um, you don't have to place, put it in an angle. You can check if it has been sharpened or not, if you place it on top of your fingernail. If the blade doesn't move um, when you place it on the fingernail, it means that it has been sharpened. So 
Once it doesn't move on the fingernail, then it means that it is ready. Next, we move on to the double beveled knife. With the double beveled knife, Moroha, um, because both sides of the blades have, have been sharpened, make sure that like, you do apply it in the same angle for both sides. Moroha has the shinogi tier, the boundary between the sharpened and unsharpened side as well. But if we sharpen the unsharpened side, the blade would become too thin um, after some use. So we make sure that it sharp we sharpen it at an adequate angle. Fifteen to twenty degrees from the sharpening stone is the best angle. And that angle is and um, should be consistent for the both tip and from the tip to the heel of the blade. Once, if we keep the same angle, then the bar comes out on one side as well. Bar is the sign that the opposite side has been sharpened. So once you see the bar, you flip the blade onto the other side. And the angle is the same as the other side, 15 to 20 degrees. And the back side will be sharpened um, with the pulling motion. So you pull the blade towards you. And that's when the weight is applied. And once the back side is sharpened with the pulling motion, you see the bar on the front side. If you sharpen with too many motions, that is just you're, you're thinning the blade unnecessarily. So the finishing, for the finish, I will just go through it once in both directions, and that should be enough. And again, with the Moroha knife, you can do the sharpening test on your fingernail. If it doesn't move, that means that it is um, that the edge is sharp. <coughs> And now I will show you how the rusted kitchen knife um, could be sharpened. You can use a wooden piece such as this. And you wet the piece. And you smooth it on top of the blade. Uh, 
クレンザーみたいなやつを塗ってやるとスムーズに取れます。And you could apply a kitchen cleanser on top of this. If you apply it,、um, it the rust will come off smoothly. Just by applying the wooden piece on top of the blade, the rust comes off quite easily. But the best thing, obviously, is to prevent the rust、um, not to develop. So, after every use、um, of the kitchen knife, please make sure to wipe,、um, wipe off the moisture with the towel. ういい um, if you don't use kitchen knife for a long time and if it will be in the storage, I would recommend applying oil.、Um, we usually use camellia oil here, but if you don't have that, vegetable oil should be sufficient enough. それを包丁に薄く塗っていただいて。And make sure you apply the oil thinly on top of the blade. それをまた少し乾いたタオルで拭き取ってください。And then wipe off the excess oil with the, a dry towel. それで新聞か何かで巻いて置いとくとサビがあまりきません。And then wrap the knife with a newspaper. If you, if you go through these steps, and the rust shouldn't affect the knife so much. シャープなみたいな、はい、あシャープなういうの使ってもいいんですけどどうしても2回3回使うと。You could use something like a sharpener, but if you use it for numerous times, then. 刃先が丸くなるんで切れ味はだんだん落ちてきます。The edge would become Not as sharp, it would become rounder, so the cutting,、um, cutting edge won't be as sharp as with a sharpening stone. Sharpening stone would make sure that the knife is as sharp as possible,、um, it is much more of an effective step. When we sharpen the knife with the sharpening stone,、um, the middle part, I don't know if you can see it, but うう、um, the sharpening stone will be curved、um, as. As that,、uh, that is the part which will be used mainly. And, and the process、um, to make sure that the, the top and the, the it's Make sure that the stone is not curved and straight as possible, and that this process is called men naoshi, the maintenance of the stone. And that is, the, that is really the key to make sure that the kitchen sharpening is as satisfying and smooth as you can experience. 
And after every sharpening of the kitchen knife, please make sure that you go through this step, men naoshi. This would ensure that the, the surface is smooth and which, which in, in return would make sure that the kitchen knife is as sharp as possible. Once the sharpening stone is curved, the kitchen knife, however much you sharpen it, it won't be adequate. And because the kitchen knife would be rolled on top of the sharpening stone. How often do you have to sharpen the knife? Well, um, if you, after a normal usage of a kitchen knife, when you start to feel that the edge is not as it, the cutting sensation is not as sharp as you, it once was. Um, that's the timing. That's when you should think about sharpening the knife. <coughs> is I think maybe that's the the end of 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 the demonstration, perhaps. Thank you very much, Yamatsuka-san. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. So we we would now like to move on to a demonstration. Uh, by Ikeda Yoshikazu of actually how to use knives. So let me just tell you a little bit about Ikeda-san first of all. So Ikeda Yoshikazu began making knives in 1967 as an apprentice to his father, who was also a blacksmith. In 1983, he opened his own forge, founding the Ikeda Tannenjo, the Ikeda Forge. Since then, he has been engaged in kitchen knife manufacturing inheriting and developing the techniques and traditions of Sakai forged knives. Ikeda-san manufactures different types of knives, different types of Japanese kitchen knives, uh, such as Mizuhonyaki and uh, Suminagashi, and he makes these mainly for professional chefs. In 1988, he was certified by METI, that's Japan's Ministry of economy, trade and industry as a traditional craftsman and is currently the vice chairman of the Sakai Forged Knives Traditional Craftsmen Association. He has won many awards for his work, including the Sakai City Special Contribution Award, the Kansai Bureau of Economy, Trade and Industry Award, and the Osaka Prefectural Award, Master Craftsman in Naniwa. And today, he is going to show us how to use knives in the preparation of Japanese cuisine. Thank you very much, Ikeda-san. We look forward to seeing your demonstration. Dozo, yoroshiku, onegaishimasu. Sakai no kaji o yatteimasu, Ikeda Yoshikazu. So shimasu kara, moroha no nakiri bojo to kataba no sashimi bojo no tsukai kata o kanta ni sutsume itashimasu. Hello, and um, thank you for the introduction. My name is Yosh Ikeda Yoshikazu. And I, today I will show you how to use the single beveled knife and cut, we will cut the vegetable um, with it and double, double beveled knife, um, both to showcase how to cut the, cut the muli as well as the um, sashimi. <laughs> And today I will, um, and this is called the nagiri 
bojo, a vegetable knife, um, mainly used at home in Japan. And with double bevel, this double beveled knife, I will show you how to slice muli. With the Moroha knife, as you can see, the blades are on both sides. So you can see that the cutting edge are very smooth and straight. Whereas this is the single beveled knife, kataha knife. You can tell that the edge is cut in an angle, diagonal. But for Japanese professional chefs, they have a technique to cut all the ingredients very straight, and um, even with the kataha knife. And there is a reason why they use the kataha knife. Um, because when they when they cut it in the muli uh, ingredients into thin strips. You can end you can end up cutting them very finely, even more finer than the double beveled knife. I have to say double beveled knife might be easier to use um, for everyday use at home, but if you are a seasoned chef, um, then the single beveled knife, kataha, um, might be better suited. It might be hard to see, but as the ingredients have been cut with a well sharpened knife, you can tell that the surface of the ingredients are very straight, smooth, and with a sheen on top. And now we are moving on to cutting the sashimi uh, with the lean cut of tuna. And for sashimi, we use the kataha single beveled knife. And and there is a reason why this um, sashimi knife is long. And this cutting technique of sashimi in Japanese is called hiki, um, pulling. And as the name suggests, you pull the knife towards you to cut the sashimi piece. Can you see? Can you 
組織が荒れて、えー、中の、えー、魚のエキスというのが出てしまいます。だから生臭くなったりする。You can tell that the sashimis have been cut with a very well sharpened knife because you can see the edge of the sashimi piece very well standing and the shine as well on the sashimi suggests that it was cut at a straight edge. If you don't, Then the cells of the sashimi would break and the, the fish extract within the sashimi and the umami would go、um, away. So make sure to use the well sharpened knife. There is a benefit to having a longer blade on a sashimi knife.、Um, I would recommend you use this、um, if you have a large enough kitchen and a large enough cutting board as well.、Um, not only that, the surface of the sashimi、um, would be. Finished well.、Um, you could, if you were cutting a large portion s of sashimi, you could, you could work two sets, two pieces,、um, two cuts at the same time with just a single knife. Moshi, I know, so go for your side, you're in, or cure me, I know, call you, cut up, no, yes, I'm saying you, they. なおかつこう先端が切れるのでいろんな形を作ったりする、えー、飾り切りということができます。If you want to be a master chef in vegetable cutting, then I, re- I would recommend you try the single bevel knife、um, for vegetables. You could use the tip、um, of the knife,、uh, which has been sharpened as well, to cut them into many different Shapes and decoration cutting could be achieved with a single、um, kataha vegetable knife. えー、um, that was what I was thinking for the demonstration. But one thing to note is that make sure you sharpen the knife the day before you cook the important meal, the celebratory meal. Because if you, cut, if you sharpen it just before you cut the ingredients, they would end up smelling、uh, metallic. So make sure that the cut, sharpening process takes place. In advance. That is it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Ikeda san, that was very, very informative. We, we now go to、uh, the time in this session where we can answer some questions from. Those who've attended today, thank you so much. There are many questions for you, Ikeda san and Yamatsuka san. So let us start with, 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 with a question that I, I, I often hear about sharpening knives. And this is from Julia. Can you use this sharpening technique on European stainless steel knives? Julia has tried, but has had. Poor results. Unaji this name, Doba no Toyota de Arto. It should be the same with the double beveled knife and technique. Stain Kano Hojo is so same bande, Jugo Kiremas. With stainless knife, um, it's 
stainless steel, 1,000 um, should be adequate enough. The sharpening stone, 1,000. I think the problem may be an angle. Um, you might have sharpened the edge at 15 degrees, for example, and the middle at 30 degrees, um, just as an example. But if you've changed the angles of the sharpening steps, then it would yield a poor result. Please make sure that the angle is consistent for the entire part of the blade and sharpen the knife until the bar comes out. The back, the back of the knife is the same. The angle should be consistent and sharpen until the burr comes out. I think once you go through these steps, um, the knife should be sharp enough. Um, there aren't any other elements I can't I can think right now. I think the angle is the key point. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. We we have we have many questions coming through. This is another about uh, about the the sharpening stones. Actually, uh, this is a question from. Uh, Pikava, uh, what is the maintenance stone? There is a sharpening stone to do the maintenance, such as this. Um, if you can't get hold of this, um, are there bricks in the UK? Brick walls, for example? Yes, yes, we have bricks. Nenga. If you are using bricks, um, make sure that you soak a brick until the bubbles come out of it. And then once the brick has been soaked, you can not you can instead pick up the sharpening stone and then smooth the surface, rubbing rubbing it on top of the brick. So for the maintenance, you could use the maintenance sharpening stone or a rougher sharpening stone, such as the green one, and smooth it on top. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We have more. We have more questions about the stones. Actually, they they they've attracted a lot of attention. This is from Maria. How do I know which is the better stone for my knife? Um, 
I believe in the UK, most of the knives are made with stainless steel. So as I mentioned before, I would recommend the sharpening stone of around 1000. It should be numbered um, when, when you go and buy it. And But because if you do use it with any lower numbers than 1000, um, the edge would become duller first. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just looking through these questions which have, okay. This is, what is the object used to smooth the sharpening stone called? Um, it, it is called the maintenance, the surface maintenance stone. Okay, May, I, I, okay, thank you. How do you say that in, in, in Japanese? Men naoshi. Men naoshi. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. Okay, we have some um, questions about, about the actual sharpening itself. Um, how can you tell, this is from Julia again, how can you tell when your stone is flat enough? Make sure that you flip the stone to the side and look at it from the side to check if it's straight or not. Okay, thank you. Um, another question about how long should the wet stone be soaked before it is used? Um, I, I don't, it, was it a brick? Um, if it's a brick, um, just soak it in the water until all the bubbles come out. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a question from Duncan. He says he has a Wagokuro Santoku knife from Aritsugu in Kyoto. It possesses both the characteristics of steel for cutting quality and stainless steel for easy maintenance. Should I sharpen this in the same way? He has a medium whetstone. Is it stainless? Stainless steel? Is it made with stainless steel? Yeah, it doesn't say, I'm afraid. It possesses is steel for cutting and stain. Yes, stainless steel for easy maintenance. So it's got, it's got, uh, yes. I think once you experience that the cut, cutting is not as smooth, or the sharp as before, then I really recommend sharpening it with a medium sharpening stone, yes. Okay, wonderful, thank you very much. This is a, um, a message, a question actually from Sophie. And she's saying, do you ever recommend using diamond stones, graded monocrystalline diamond for sharpening? Um, diamond stones themselves are numbered as well. And so if it says, um, if it says 1000, then it can be used for stainless steel sharpening. So please check the numbers. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, this is a, um, an, an, another general question here. 
I, um, if you haven't got a Japanese knife yet, um, which one is the best to start off with for general use? I think this is maybe a question for Ikeda-san. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> え、スタンレスじゃなくてえ、カーボンスティーブのえ、ま、錆びるタイプの包丁を使っていただく方がえ、切れ味的にはすごくいいです。あ、カーボン。単素工です。Thank you. If you are going to buy the, your first Japanese kitchen knife, then I would recommend um, choosing the carbon steel instead of the stainless steel. That's the first thing to make note of. Thank you. And, and while we're sticking with, 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 with uh, buying your first knife and, and, and the use of those knives, I wonder if you, do, do you have a particular special type of, of cutting board which you think is best? Is there a type of wood, for example, that you would recommend to buy for your cutting board? For the cutting board, um, I would recommend finding the um it's finding the one that's made of the wood um which is less fragrant. And also with a softer um, texture as well, it would be it would be better for the kitchen knife. Thank you, thank you very much. And maybe another one to you as well, Ikeda-san. We have why why do you pull the knife towards you when cutting sashimi? <laughs> Well, it's hard to explain. Well,聞いてくる角度、引くことによって、え、臭みがね、薄くなるっていうか。だから、切れ味が外側にいると、え、こういう刺身包丁は まあ、どの包丁も大体そうですが、先に行くほど薄くなってます。だから、え、押していくとだんだん厚くなっていくので、え、抵抗として、え、厚みがなるんで、え、引く方がやっぱり切りやすい。The pulling stroke, the long pulling stroke makes the sashimi thinner as well um with the consistent thickness because as you can see with the sashimi knife the tip is thinner than the bottom so if you push it in the thicker edge would break the cells of the sashimi and um, the, the cuts of the fish so that's why it's much better to pull it towards you thank you thank you very much and, and while we're talking about the knives and the preparation of food we obviously have to keep these knives clean as you mentioned um how should i clean my knife asks maria uh, with water and soap or uh, hot or cold water to maintain the knife and also to make sure that it lasts um, for like semi permanently, I would recommend washing it with a lukewarm water after every use and then dry it with a towel. That should be that should be good for the knife. Thank you. 
you also mentioned the 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 knives which, which if they if they have rust on them uh we've had a couple of questions here from from a viewers which type of wood if any do you recommend for removing the rust on knives <laughs> um, it could be it could be anything really um in japan the fish cake comes with the board um the wooden board as well i don't know if that exists in the uk but if not um there are i don't uh, corks uh, can you get hold of cork for example um on the wine you can yes, absolutely yes Okay, in that case, you could use that, um, the cork, and use the kitchen cleanser, and you rub it on top of the blade, then the rust should come off. Thank you very much. We have a, a, a few minutes only left, unfortunately, already. Lots of questions still to go through, so I'll, I'll ask uh, maybe a couple more. Uh, staying with you, Yamatsuka-san, uh, this is a question about the, the hand grip. Again, this is just to maybe show us again, if you may. The hand grip was different for the, for the front side on the, the single beveled and double beveled from the back and the back of the double beveled, is that correct? Could you could you show us again how that, how that worked? This is how I held it for the sharpening of the back. For the front, such as this. And this is for the front surface. And this is how you hold the back um, to sharpen the backside of the single beveled knife. Make sure that you hold the kitchen knife with your fingertips, but um, don't don't sharp. Um, yeah, just hold the knife well with the other hand. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I think, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. Uh, if we can maybe thank i'm sure everybody is 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 wanting to thank yamatsuko san and, and ikeda san for having very kindly joined us uh live from sakai uh it's 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 wonderful to have you thank you so much indeed for sharing your your knowledge with us uh yamatsuko san for your demonstration and explanation and also ikeda san for your showing us how to put knives into practice and of, and of course, you are a, a master craftsman yourself in, in making the, the, these knives that uh, a Togushi like yamatsuka san would sharpen. Also, thank you to our interpreter, uh, Air uh, Kurosawa, for, for helping us today and for all the, the people behind the scenes at, uh, at Sakai who have made this possible. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today as well. And... All attendees will receive uh, a feedback question here by email. Uh, please fill this in with your comments as this will help us to continue to create these sorts of events. I will just briefly show 
what we are doing at Japan House London in the very near future. Uh, our Sakai series, Ancient Technology and Industrial Heritage, continues uh, with one more event in December. The last event is actually on the 9th of December, and it is Oboru Kombu, which is shaved kelp, kind of seaweed. And this is a talk and demonstration. This is the last of the online series that we will be doing with Sakai. And it explores the world of Oburu Kombo, this type of hand shaved kelp, which is produced in Hokkaido and then hand processed in Sakai. This will appear on our website very shortly. Also, we uh, continue our exhibition. If you're able to visit uh, Japan House London, the exhibition Tokoro Asao Connect Individual and Group. Tokoro Asao, of course, is the designer of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games emblems. We also have an event uh, with the work of Tokoro Asao at Japan House. It's called Tokoro Asao Connect Ozi Orizuru and Nurie Origami and Coloring Workshop. This is on the 13th and 14th of November at Japan House. And also, I should say that we have our next exhibition, which is Windowology, New Architectural Views from Japan. That is from the 1st of December until the 10th of April. Many thanks to everybody once again. And thank you very much to Yamatsuko-san and Igeda-san for joining us from Sakai. Many thanks. Bye-bye.